Good evening. I'm going to call our meeting to order. Today is Tuesday, October 4th, and this is the meeting of the Templeton Community Service District Board of Directors. And with that, I'll ask our board secretary to do a roll call, please. Directors English? Here. Bardonish? Here. Gardini? Here. Logan? Here. And Peterson? Here. You will please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And saying that we have only one item of business um, this evening, um, I think we'll skip over that item. Uh, we do have members of the public present, so I will uh, make a, a statement regarding public comments. Uh, members of the public may address the board on any item of interest within the subject matter jurisdiction of the district um, and the board, but which is not on tonight's agenda. In compliance with the Brown Act, the board cannot discuss or act on items not on tonight's agenda. However, board members or district staff members may briefly respond to statements made or questions posed by the public, additionally on their own initiative or in response to questions posed by the public, a board or staff member may ask a question for clarification. Further, the board may request staff to report back to this body at a subsequent meeting um, on any matter concerning any business or to take action to direct staff to place a matter of business on a future agenda. So with that, if any members of the public, and I don't believe we have any on the call, uh, if any members of the public wishes to address the board, you may do so if the item is not on tonight's agenda. Okay, seeing that there are no members of our public wishing to uh, address the board, we'll move to the consent uh, agenda. And there's four items. The first item is the minutes of the board. Um, consider adopting the regular meetings of September 20th, uh, 2022. I'm gonna ask that this item be pulled um, since Director uh, Peterson was not present for that meeting. And then the next item is resolution number 21-2022, remote meeting determination. The board will consider adopting resolution number 21-2022, making findings to permit the continuation of remote meetings uh, and committee meetings uh, in compliance with AB 361. The third item is resolution number 22-2022, the Toad Creek uh, Terrence easement. The board will consider adopting resolution number 22-2022, accepting the easement required for the construction of the sewer line. And item D is notice of completion of the Santa Lucia School, uh, Santa Lucia School Water Service Connection Project. The board will consider accepting the work of the Santa Lucia School Water Service Connection um, Project and complete and directing staff to file a notice of completion. So with regard to the first item, uh, would any board member like to pull any of the other items besides uh, item A? Okay, so with item A, I would like to make a motion that the board approve the minutes of the September 20th, 2022. I'll second. I'll second. Okay, so a motion made by Director Logan to approve the minutes of September 20th, 2022. 22, seconded by Director Giardini. Director Slogan? Aye. Giardini? Yes. English? Aye. Cardonish? Aye. And Peterson? Abstaining? No, I'm staying. Okay, so we have uh, four members, four board members approving that, uh, one board member abstaining, so that motion passes. Um, so the remaining three items are items B, C, and D of the consent agenda. Um, do we have a motion to approve those three items? Um, Director Fardanish, are you making a motion? Oh, I, he, he knows on that. <laughs> I heard you. <laughs> All right, so we have a motion made by Director Fardanish. We have a second. Director English? 
Okay, so a motion made by Director Fardanish to approve consent item B, C, and D, uh, seconded by Director English. Roll call, please. Director Fardanish. English. Aye. Jardini. Yes. Peterson. Yes. And Logan. Aye. Okay, that motion passes 5 0. Thank you for that. Um, moving on to our item of business, and this is the board vacancy and review the interested persons. Um, uh, the board will review a letter of interest for the upcoming vacant seat on the board and determine appropriate uh, and make a recommendation to the County Board of Supervisors regarding the appointment. And I'm gonna ask the general manager because in the packet there is a staff report and I'm going to ask the general manager to speak on this uh, to provide a little background and also the direction that has been provided by both the county um, election board and by Dr. Or John Pichon's office as well. So with that, sure, I'll turn yes. it over to you. Uh, thank you much. Um, <clears throat> as, the, as you're aware, um, there's an election coming up this November. Prior to the election, there's a formal nomination period uh, that's that's um, determined by the, the elections code for all community service districts and, and um, school school districts. The county clerk uh, runs the election on our, our behalf, and our election is consolidated with the county's uh, general election each November. Um, this nomination period, <coughs> there were two seats that are <coughs> that would would have been open for the coming election. We only had one uh, candidate file nomination period uh, during the nomination period for Peterson. Um, the nomination period was then extended for five additional days because what just the second incumbent in the seat didn't file uh, papers, so that triggers an automatic extension of the nomination period. Uh, during that extended period, no additional citizens came forward to run uh, to submit names. So, uh, <coughs> at the, excuse me, close the nomination period. There was only one um, one person file, so um, the the county board of supervisors is expected to, um, in lieu of an election, appoint as an elect as if he had won the election, Wayne Peterson, to um, the upcoming four year term on November eighth. That's the, the date of the election. Additionally, um, the county is authorized under the elections code to appoint another person who would have otherwise been qualified to run for the board to fill the full four-year uh, seat. So um, a month or so ago, we brought this item to you as a discussion <clears throat> and the board directed us to do what we could to solicit some interest, generate some interest, make it known to the public that the seat was open and come back to you uh, prior to the deadline that the county established of October 7th for you to consider making a recommendation of one or more interested parties in filling that role. Um, so we did that, we issued a, a news release that um, uh, that did generate four letters of interest, uh, which is uh, terrific, right? Just a month ago, we had, uh, were unsure who would come forward. So we have four letters of interest, that's uh, great news. And, um, and then just last week, we got some clarity about how the county expects the process to go. This is a, this is unusual when there isn't anybody uh, uh, who had filled out a, a nomination during the nomination period. So um, I've inserted into the staff report some direct communication that, that um, John Shong's office had with county council and with the, the county clerk's office because we were unsure about the uh, whether there was an, an additional process that was necessary in the county for interested parties to go through. And the county council's office has, has made it clear that in this case, since the county clerk recorder has asked us to submit a recommendation that any interested parties should come to you, which more people have, and that you, uh, this the, the Templeton CSD should make a recommendation, and that recommendation will be presented by the county clerk to the county board of supervisors. Um, the, there is no uh, requirement for any interested party to apply separately uh, with the county. I will pro provide them all the letters of interest and any recommendation that comes out of tonight's meeting. Um, and then, in in additional telephone calls with with Vicki Jansen, who's the legislative assistant for uh, Supervisor John Pichon. She made it clear that the, the, the one of the times that this has occurred was kind of a, a messy situation at Independence Ranch, and there was a lack of clarity about how the process went 
uh, worked and some people were kind of lobbying the board of supervisors while others were working with the independence ramp csd and they, so it was kind of messy so she wanted to make sure that this was very very clear to to our board and to these interested members of the public that they, their expectation was this this item would come to you you would make a recommendation to the county board of supervisors that recommendation would be presented for consideration and the expectation is that the county board, <coughs> board of supervisors will appoint somebody on uh, November 8th. That's the actual date of the election. That's when the sign will come before them. So um, hope that helps. Uh, there are four uh, persons who submitted letters of interest, and there were a couple of others who had uh, inquired. Um, those <coughs> persons are Jerry Gast, William Gawinski, uh, Kalud Pearson, and Eric Mortensen. And my recommendation is that um, you invite each of them to introduce themselves and answer, um, ask any questions that you may have about their letter of interest. Um, although we, we, we don't have a formal interview set up and we haven't asked them to pre be prepared for any sort of formal presentation. Uh, additionally, you can um, answer any questions that they may have about the, the role or the position um, uh, of the board member on the Temple Lincoln Service District Board of Directors. Um, once those folks have spoken, uh, I'd be happy to answer questions that you have about the process. Then I'd, I'd suggest you'd ask any members of the public, uh, probably the same people, uh, <laughs> um, to, to, to provide any comments as public comments. Uh, and then the board should uh, deliberate and um, determine how best to go about making a recommendation uh, for the Board of Supervisors' consideration. Um, Director Georgiani, you have a question? I have a procedural question. Um, so for us to have a recommendation, two out of five is that a recommendation or does it have to be three out of five does it have to be a majority um well uh, i think you'll need to work on a process to where the majority of the board is willing to is to willing to cast that recommendation if, if you're unable to let's to to reach that then i suppose you could have multiple recommendations but i was i was directly encouraged to ensure that this meeting ends with a rec a recommendation to the board of supervisors question so i understand that we we need to make a recommendation as a board but as individual members can we write down our uh not you know who we think is appropriate or uh, we you wanted a recommend. verbal vote versus a blind vote is that what you're asking um, no write it down a That's verbal right. versus a blind vote yes yeah so i would like to write it down present it to the general manager and then he could tally the um, the numbers or however it works out Oh, um, and then so that way, and so we, you know, we'll, we will have our recommendation as a board, but individually, you know, we have the. Yeah, I don't. Uh, that's not something. I, I mean, all of your your business needs to be conduct, conducted transparently. Okay. I was going to ask, wouldn't that then be a public record? So really, a, 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 a vote, a blind vote, really would be a public record. So okay. my, it would be my recommendation to listen to uh, the applicants. And for us to make a uh, have a nomination from the board, and, and then uh, get a second, and and, uh, and then a vote on it. I mean, so I kind of traditionally how we do it, or however you see. But I, I think that that process of uh, us doing that verbally now is the way to go. I, I envision this to not be a formal interview. Um, I see this as an opportunity for each of the individuals to. Um, really present um, the reasons why they would like to serve on the board and to be able to have an exchange where they have questions um, that they may ask them. Um, and at the end, you know, I don't know if any of the candidates would then decide, you know what, I heard so-and-so speak. And you know what, I really support that individual. I think they would be um, better at serving. Um, and so I'm going to rescind my nomination. So that may occur as well. But I would like to at least have the candidates be able to present themselves to the board. And so since this body has to make a recommendation, a single recommendation, um, but I don't want to make it a too formal process. I would like to keep it kind of friendly and light um, as we proceed. Um, and hopefully that's agreeable to other board members. And then we can do a verbal vote um, and make that determination. What I do want to emphasize here is that I just want to thank all of you for coming forward. Um, 
you know, because as uh, general manager Brills had indicated at the start of this, we had no candidates. Um, and so we're <clears throat> grateful that so many people did respond. And unfortunately, there is one seat. But this <laughs> process has brought to light a need for the district to really do the communication that took place after the fact. So we need to move that communication up earlier to let the community know that the district has these seats coming up for election because in two years time, we have three seats up for election. And by, in my opinion, by the district remaining silent, it is then supporting the incumbent. And I think it's in the best interest of the district to have that public communication that there is an election that takes place and any willing candidate to file their candidacy so that there's an election and let the people in the community make that decision uh, rather than this body in terms of who serves. So um, General Manager Burles and I have discussed this, that this needs to be a regular occurrence, which may be in around the June timeframe. So it allows interested parties to reach out to the general manager, ask questions, ask questions to the current board members, and then if that person so chooses to file their candidacy, they can go through the county and file and go through the election process. So I think there's a lesson learned here um, from this entire process. Um, so anyway, so there's my comments, but I do want to thank you all. I think I think the questions that have been raised about a blind vote versus verbal is this is not easy for us um, because reading all of your letters of interest, you all bring something different, um, but you all have um, something of value um, to this body. So again, appreciate you, um, you know, submitting your letter of interest. And so with that, unless there's any further questions um, from the board, um, I'll open it up to each of the candidates to speak uh, if they'd like to just give a little background about um, themselves and why they would like to serve um, and your involvement in the community. Anyone want to go first? I will. Okay. <laughs> I stand here as well, probably disappear. Um, good evening, my name is Khalid Pearson. Um, I am a long time San Luis Obispo County resident. I grew up here, went to San Luis Obispo High School. Um, my parents moved to Templeton over 20 years ago while I was in college. And then we slowly returned back here as I got my degrees and got my education and had a family and decided that Templeton was a great place to raise my two young girls. I have a six year old and a recently turned two-year-old. Um, so we're, we're heavily involved in the school district and the schools and um, the recreation department. Um, I currently sit on the Templeton Recreation Foundation Board. Uh, we've been actively uh, fundraising for the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, my daughter actually plays soccer for, for the rec department, so we're involved in that way as well. Um, I, I'm an attorney by trade. I've been an attorney for over eight years. Uh, I've done business law. I've done contracts. I've done um, mediation, arbitration, kind of a variety of law. Right now, I do uh, insurance defense. Um, other than that, I would love to be involved in the community. I already am involved in the community, and I just would love to uh, give back even more so. Obviously, we're here for a long time, and I want to ensure that um, the community stays within its charm and within um, has all the offerings that we moved back here for. Thank you. Um, Director Jardini, oh. you have a question? I do. Um, did you um, talk with um, Director, I'm sorry, General Manager Brilts or meet with him in your um, search for finding out information about this position? I did. And did you talk to any board members or the president of the board? Um, you don't have to name them, but, but regarding this position? I attempted to speak to all of you. I got a hold of four of you. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Do you have any questions for any of us? I think I asked all my questions in the meeting, but I, I appreciate all the transparency and um, honesty and feedback that I got from all of you during our meeting. So I really appreciate that. Okay, and thank we, you. We didn't scare you away? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an attorney, I seem scarier. <laughs> Would like to go next, Jerry? Well, my name is Jerry Gast. Um, 
recently moved to Templeton about five years ago, lived in Atascadero for 22 years prior to that. Came back to the area because we love it here. We raised our kids here and we will die to be back at the Central Coast. My profession was in public education. I served at Tascadero High School as the Dean of Students, the junior high as the vice principal, the two elementary schools as principal, then one other in the uh, Southern California area. I strongly believe in community service and in volunteering. And uh, as far as that goes, I'm involved in hospice, Central Coast Hospice as a respite provider. I enjoy doing that. I see a need for that for those who are caring for loved ones. They, they need a break. And I see it happen with my own family, other families too. I've been involved with uh, loaves and fishes, providing food to the needy. I've been involved with Echo, now serving once a month through our church and providing food. Um, I had started the ministry within my church, my wife and I were both holding hands, helping people within the community or our church who need help with temporary things. It might be yard work, it might be transportation, it could be whatever. I've also been involved with uh, Pastel Cares before Echo took over, serving the homeless food and providing overnight shelter. When we were doing that, we would provide overnight shelter to the church once a week, and I would be one of the volunteers who would spend the night there where homeless people had a place to stay and they were supervised. I enjoyed that too. Got to know many homeless people on a personal level. So I strongly believe in that volunteerism, which when I saw this opportunity to volunteer within our, my community now, uh, I was very encouraged to get a chance to do that. So I submitted my letter. That's who I am. And that's what I like to do. Thank you. Any question? Yes, Director Jardine. Yeah, same question. <laughs> Did you speak to um, the general manager of Rhodes to find out information about this position? No, I just communicated him with the letter and then he communicated with me about the meetings and that's the extent of our communication. And did you speak to any board members? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Nope. I have a question. So uh, we have been coming to the meetings the past couple of times. We yes. appreciate it. Thank you. And um, as far as, uh, you know, you've seen some of the topics that we discussed, is that, uh, are those topics something that you know, you value or have interests? Well, yeah, when I was principal of school, I had a budget in school. Mm -hmm. I see you guys deal with some very large, very large budgets, larger than what I ever dealt with. Mm -hmm. And I see the need to distribute that, those funds in a, a fair way, an equitable way, and an appropriate way. And that's something I would enjoy being part of. And, something, and I, I like numbers. So I enjoyed math. I think I can handle that pretty well. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, Jared. Well, Okay, hey, so who's next? William? I guess I'll give it a try. <laughs> You're not scared. Uh, my name is William Nowinski. Uh, in my letter of, in, of uh, interest, I pretty much mentioned you. Uh, I've been in uh, the Central Coast since uh, 2005, and I've been in Templeton since uh, 2017. I live in the uh, Templeton Ranch community. And I'm a member of the uh, board of, uh, well, the Homeowners Association. I've uh, been on many homeowners in the past. Uh, I've been on many homeowners associations. Uh, I've never been on a position as, you know, important as this, but uh, I think I could uh, bring a lot of uh, insight into, you know, from, from my past experience. I worked for Caltrans for uh, 30 odd years, so I, I know a lot about uh, what's going on, you know goes on in different communities. Director, <laughs> um, um, did you uh, meet with our general manager, Mr. Brooks? And uh, the general it? manager reached out to me. Okay. And we talked on the phone and also he sent me a, a link to the a website and agenda items. And also um, last Friday, I met with the, the president that uh, I just happened to walk into the museum and we, uh, we met. So. Ah, at the museum. <laughs> at the museum. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, Eric, last but not yes. least. Thank you. Uh, my name is Eric Mortensen. I currently work for the city of San Luis Obispo as an IT engineer. I've worked for them for nine years. Prior to that, I was a local consultant. I've grown up here in the Central Coast for my entire life. Uh, recently moved here three years ago. 
Uh, I saw the opening in the paper and I felt it was a shame that it wasn't filled. So I put my interest in and hope for the best candidate possible. And that's what I did. <laughs> I did email inquiring if there's any other candidates had applied, uh, which I responded with, but there were a few, so I did put it. Thank you. Thank you. No, I have... Go ahead, Director Pardonis. Yeah, I First of all, thank you for your service. Thanks, sir. Appreciate it. Um, and um, so are you aware of the jurisdictions? Of, yes. So you Right. So you're yes, right. currently we actually have a city council meeting that I'm overseeing technical support. <laughs> okay, so okay, so that's what actually my question was. So city, you know, city is a little bit different. Than, they are, uh, they are. You know, and I work with my counterparts in the county as well. Okay, so you're aware. Of yes, they are. You know, we have some jurisdiction, but not obviously correct. But you're perfect. Thank you very much, Thank you, sir. So one other thing I'd like to make sure that all candidates are aware is kind of the time commitment. Um, so in addition to these board members that take uh, meetings that take place the first Tuesday and uh, was it first and third, third Tuesday of the month. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I know it's been too long. Um, first and third Tuesday of each month, we all, each of us serve on at least two committees. Um, and those committees can be wastewater, uh, water. Um, we have the fire and emergency. We have uh, uh, TRF, um, Templeton uh, Rec Foundation, the uh, Templeton Area Advisory Committee, uh, the Admin Committee. Fire, no, finance. Uh, finance, yes, finance and admin. Um, pardon me? Nascimento. Nascimento, uh, there's the uh, Water Resource Advisory Committee um, in SLO. Um, there is the uh, Groundwater Sustainability um, Committee, uh, GSA. What am I missing? But it's roughly two committees that each of us serve on. Those committees um, meet anywhere from, um, you know, some once a month. Some may meet every other month or maybe quarterly, so it varies. Um, so the commitment's a little different, but the expectation is on some of those external meetings, um, you are representing TCSD at those meetings. So I wanna make sure, and some of those meetings do take place during the day. So um, they're not evening meetings, only our board meetings are in the evenings. Uh, and that's as an attempt to get more public interest. So I want to make sure that that's understood. And if that is an issue for anyone here, um, you might consider that. Um, anything else that we should um, bring to light um, to anyone here that I've not mentioned? We get phone calls or inquiries that aren't in our jurisdiction. <laughs> yes, we do get inquiries that aren't in our jurisdictions and phone calls. Um, and uh, so that does occur. Um, but those are easily handled um, by referring them to the appropriate agency. Um, so that's not an issue. There's, um, a, there's an expectation that we uh, study uh, our, our binder items and, become, and come prepared. Yeah and ask questions of the general manager uh, and you know, be educated about the items that are coming before us. In some cases that involves communication with people who are affected by them. So the ex parte communications with folks who are, are involved. So um, there is some- uh, Homework. Groundwork, homework in advance of the meetings. And sometimes that can be somewhat substantial and sometimes it's not. Many times it's, it's not, but it's part of- it can be some detailed reading. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, anything else that you can think of? There are some functions that we attend periodically. Yeah. We'll do staff appreciation. And yeah. Sometimes some planning sessions that are outside the normal. Yeah, we do have strategic planning that we have right now, a strategic plan that's 2020 to 2023. So sometime next year, I know you're not thrilled about this, but sometime next year, we're probably going to have to have another strategic planning meeting uh, and set some strategies and goals for the district. So that is something that is typically done on a Saturday, um, but it can be done in the evening too. It's just really when it's convenient for the board. Um, 
trying to think. Oh, there's also <laughs> if you've not had an opportunity, we do have board norms and code of ethics um, that I would encourage you to uh, go to the district website and take a look at those because it does set kind of the conduct that is expected of all, of all board members um, because we act as a collective body. Um, so uh, it's important that everybody understands really kind of what that expectation is um, because that's what keeps us functioning. So um, I think that's about it. I can't think of anything else. I do have one question. Sure. When I worked in the school system, new school board members went to a training about the Brown Act and about how oh. to function as a board. <laughs> is there a training that we would go to if we were selected? Yes. Um, there is uh, ethics training that is required and sexual harassment training, and that is every two years. All board members are expected to go through that. Um, the certificates have to be submitted uh, to make sure that uh, this board uh, is... Um, complying with that. Um, there is also, um, what is it, the form 700 that has to be completed where each board member is responsible for uh, submitting uh, any um, financial conflicts that might exist um, with any project that the district undertakes. Um, so um, any rental property that you have here in the district, um, what else is on there? And that goes to the um, county, but it also goes to the state. Um, what's the acronym or what's the... Um, I think it was the FPPC, Fair Political Practices. Yeah, Summit. thank you. Um, so there is reporting on an annual basis that's required. Um, and also when the board members, uh, that's annually. And also even if you leave as a board member, you have to make that submission. So even if you were running for a state of California elected position, the same requirements apply to each of us. So just know that. Um, but um, some of the training that is available in terms of ethics and sexual harassment, um, that is online. So it is a computer-based um, application. Um, so it can be done at, in your convenience. Um, so that is something. Um, we also, when board members are brought on, the general manager does bring his direct reports together um, to give kind of an overview um, in more detail, understanding of the district. And why don't you speak to that? Sure. So we, we would do an orientation with the uh, uh, incoming board member, um, uh, taking a tour of the facilities, uh, uh, water, wastewater, parks, uh, parks and recreation. Uh, you get to know, you know who, who the points of contact are. Um, fire station, uh, those kinds of things. Um, and then uh, we'd also do a briefing with our legal counsel, uh, uh, you know, sort of do some don'ts. There's some, there's some basic literature that you kind of get started with. And then through CSDA and the Special District Leadership Foundation, there are, um, you can kind of get as, as, you can get as involved as you'd like. All of our current board members have been through what's called um, the Special District Leadership um, Foundation, Boy, I'm trying to blank. It's a, it's a, uh, it's like a certification, like two and a half days of uh, governance, um, leadership training. <coughs> uh, so those those programs are available and held a couple of times a year. Uh, and the CSDA holds uh, conferences that are both in person and then a number of webinars that are available, uh, both um, on demand or at scheduled times. And so you you could um, and, and then. Uh, our, in the recent past, our board hasn't been particularly active with CSDA in terms of the, the larger organization, but there are opportunities to get involved in, in a more of a statewide um, organization uh, through the California Special Districts Association, of which we are a member. What's that acronym when you said CSDA? It is? California Special Districts Association. I think you just said CSP, sorry. Um, in, in any case, there's also opportunities for board members to serve in, in some regional organizations beyond those that we have appointees to. Uh, uh, special district special districts have representation on LAFCO, Local Agency Formation Commission. It's a countywide um, organization. Uh, there's <coughs> excuse me, also the Integrated Waste Management Authority which is a countywide organization. There's 
um, special district representation, but but the, those representatives <coughs> represent a number of special districts, not just Templeton CSD. So I think there's there's opportunities for folks who want uh, to get involved in, a, in, in, a, in other ways um, beyond just uh, right here as a board member. And I can say that some of the orientation uh, you will see behind the scenes the operations of the um, uh, Templeton uh, CSD, uh, knowing exactly where each well is located, uh, walking the wastewater treatment plant and looking at the ponds. Uh, and so um, you, you kind of see the curtains pulled back and you see things that the general public um, does not have access to. Um, so it is a good orientation that will kind of help kind of get you started. Um, but, um, and certainly our general manager, I, I know has been very open and available to all of us, um, when there's questions. So, um, he and his staff are, are very good with, uh, answering questions that the board might have. So. Any question, anything else that we need to kind of bring up? Um, they don't seem to be running for the door just yet. Uh, <laughs> so I have, I have a question. Uh, sure. You mentioned that, you know, you're, you're uh, on other boards, you know, such as sewer and water and uh, fire and th those, those other uh, organizations, is that, is that like a formal uh, organization? Or? Those are really subcommittees of this board. Oh, okay. So they will meet and discuss kind of detailed um, operational issues and will make recommendations to bring forth to this board. So um, that's how we operate because rather than having all of those things just come, it's um, each of us serve on a subcommittee, if you will, um, and uh, we'll look at some of those issues and ask the questions and flesh out the details before it comes forward to this board. So there isn't any way to join the subcommittees if you're not involved with it. As a public member of the public, you can always attend those subcommittees. You're welcome to attend. They're open to the public, um, but um, they're not separate where you would have any voting per se. Uh, you would be attending as a member of the public. Okay. I, I guess there is one that would be uh, measure, uh, measure A. Uh... Measure A. We do have a measure A. You're right. We do have a measure A um committee which is really a public committee um and it is a committee that has been formed from measure a which was to fund our 24 7 fire operations um and staffing and that committee is to make sure that the funds that are collected for measure a are used specifically for 24-hour staffing and that no other purpose uh, but that is um, staffed by members of the public. Thank you. Anything else? Can we cover it all? Any questions that any of you have right now? Okay, show of hands. Are you all still interested? <laughs> okay, so we've got four interested. You didn't make our jobs any easier. <laughs> okay. Um, Yes, thank you for not filing when I was running because I didn't want to. It's to thank you because you made his job that much easier. <laughs> he gets to be appointed. Um, Director English, you had a comment or a question? Yeah, a couple of things. I, I do have some comments. If, if now's an opportunity. Yes, to, absolutely. To, uh, to have some um, dialogue about this item. First of all, thank you for your introductory comments. I really appreciate the fact that you mentioned that this really has kind of turned into an opportunity for us, which probably wouldn't have happened uh, had we uh, you know, had one more person step forward and had an election. So we have some more interest generated as a result of this. And, and I, I agree that that letter or the outreach is an important component moving forward. Uh, Mr. Nowitzki uh, brought up something that I was going to bring up, which was, uh, I, I think uh, this is an opportunity for us to look at other ways in which the public can participate in TCSD at a level that, that would provide us with uh, some opportunities to educate people to serve on this board. And, and uh, one of my thoughts, in fact, if I uh, get to that point, I'll actually make a motion tonight, is for us to add a, a, a citizen member to each one of our subcommittees. So we have two board members. And, and so if we added a, a, a component of one 
a non-board member who was a resident. It could be an opportunity for others to serve in a different capacity. And it could be an opportunity. You, you look at planning commissions and there's planning commissions, there's park and rec commissions, there's all these commissions that cities have. And it's an opportunity for people to really kind of get in the weeds and find out a little bit more about the agency. And then say, hey, I, I would like to be on the board. And, and I think for me, that's a great opportunity. This is a great opportunity for us to bring that forward. It would be a relatively simple thing. We'd have to change our bylaws. Certainly there may be some, even some code changes. I don't know. Uh, but uh, you know, it would allow folks an opportunity to come in and, and participate. And maybe there's some folks who just want to say serve on the fire committee. And, and, and you know, it would provide us with a little bit of a, a different element on that committee uh, and, and uh, some different input. Uh, and, and so I think this would be a good opportunity for us and maybe those folks who we don't select tonight may be willing to participate in that capacity. Uh, and so we, we don't lose this interest. We don't lose this energy. We don't lose this opportunity. So I, I, I strongly encourage you. I, I like that idea. Um, I'm going to just because I don't know that um, we're able to really kind of flesh that out tonight, but I think there's an opportunity maybe for the finance and admin committee to look at that and to, because I think there's value in doing that um, in, in getting the interest. So I would rec make that recommendation if other board members feel the same. That way the bylaws could be looked at and say, how do we, what changes do we need to do to introduce to make that change? Certainly, there, there's a number of steps and my motion wouldn't be to just say yeah. we do this immediately. It would be to have the general manager bring back a report that maybe goes through the, the admin finance committee or what have you and, and bring that back for future board action and near future board action. And I, I'd be interested to see if you weren't selected tonight, would that be a role that any of you would be interested in playing? Because they're so I, I think there's an opportunity here, and, and I, I think that would be uh, something that may take a little while to develop, but it, it, it may be helpful down the road. Or maybe three, something two years simple. Now, so. yeah. 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 No. yeah, so I, I think we can, the, the, the board could provide some general direction that items not specifically on your agenda, and it would require um, some additional steps to ensure we uh, follow that process. But I, uh, your committee appointments, Right now, right now are annual, and so they'll be up for appointment again in January. But, but I think the that's board. for the board, though. I, I think what what's being recommended is that we take since we've got four interested candidates, but only one position on the board. In order to retain that interest that we have, is to consider having the individuals, the other three individuals serve on this committee um, and, and we can define what those committees are. And it would be kind of a stepping stone uh, into um, in three years or two years time when there's three board positions open, it would be kind of some little exposure to say, yeah, I'm gonna file, I wanna serve on the board. Yeah, I think it'd be a good um, opportunity for folks to, to become more engaged with the district to determine if this is something they're interested in. And I, I guess I view it more as even a, a long-term strategy, but that you would then cultivate interest into those yeah. on those committees in a permanent way going forward. And again, like like a planning commissioner or a parks and recreation commissioner or something like that, those tend to generate future <coughs> candidates. Yeah. In other words, in other words, if we were a city, you'd probably find that half of the council members had previously served on the planning commission or a parks and recreation commission or something like that. But we don't really have a, a special districts don't often have don't have those <coughs> built-in opportunities. So this would be a way, I think, of of creating that. Yeah, I think it would cultivate some of that. Um, so, and it sounds like from the nods in the audience, it looks like it is something that uh, folks are interested in. So um, that would be my recommendation: is um, admin and finance, unless you think you can tackle that yourself. Yeah, I did a little a little bit of research. It's, to me, it's more about okay, what are the do we have to do any code changes or what formal actions have to be take have to be considered? It may be as simple as just modifying our bylaws and uh, um, and defining a, or placing a members of the public seats. And then, of course, you'd have to have some uh, some way of determining who's qualified to serve on, on those 
committees. So they have to be a resident of the district and a voting uh, registered vote, et cetera, or maybe it's, it's broader. So those are things that we could uh, flush out and, and bring back either through the committee or to the board, depending on how straightforward the items are. Is, um, I'm assuming that all uh, board members are in favor of the recommendation by Director English. Okay, I'm seeing a nod of heads. Okay, all right. Any other comments? Okay. Uh, are we ready to, uh, any other comments from any of you in the audience before we get into our board discussion on um, who's gonna fill that seat? Yes, please. Oh, Nanette, um, oh, she's back. Nanette, uh, welcome back. Um, I hope you're doing well. You have a question? Uh, thank you. Um, I'm not there yet, but uh, I really wanted to participate in this meeting tonight. Uh, first of all, very quickly, I cannot tell you how disappointed I am in this community uh, for us not having an election. Um, it tells me how few people know and understand what our local government is and how little interest there is in it. And, you know, I realize that you're doing without any form of a news publication right now and have been for the last almost two years now, but the bottom line is um, citizenship is important and uh, I am just massively disappointed in this community right now. That being said, um, as, I, as I look at this process, um, uh, Thank you for making it uh, completely transparent um, and um, uh, keeping it uh, upbeat and, and relatively um, simple. Um, I do um, feel that as I look at the candidates, um, if I were standing in your shoes, I would be looking at the candidate that has what I would call the least baggage. It brings the least amount of preconceptions and has uh, the least amount of, of uh, oh, how do I put it, uh, work in other areas of government. Um, and also the one who uh, seems to have the, the, uh, the energy and the desire to learn, uh, to get involved, um, and to uh, do um, a good job. Um, the bottom line, I would, I would hope that all the candidates that, that are here tonight, and thank you very much for stepping forward, um, recognize that you're here to serve not TCSD, but the people of this community through TCSD. And in order to do a good job to do that, you need to understand what your job is and you need to apply yourself vigorously. So with that, uh, thank you uh, for allowing me to uh, voice my uh, thoughts and concerns and uh, uh, all the best to uh, whoever's chosen tonight. Okay, thank you for that, Nanette, and um, glad to see you participating in this evening's meeting. You always have uh, great input, so we've missed that from you. Okay, uh, any other comments, questions from anyone? Hey. Um, I'll, I'll start, unless somebody else wants to. I was thinking we just draw straws and let them <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. No. Uh, one, thank you. I, I appreciate you stepping forward. Uh, it's my seat that's going to be filled, so I appreciate you doing that. Um, was a little worried that we wouldn't get anybody coming forward, and so what are we doing that situation? So thank you again. Uh, I, I, I uh, am familiar with two of the candidates. Uh, I, I uh, worked with uh, Jerry Gast uh, in the Tascadero when I was uh, working for the city and find him to be an individual of incredible integrity, and, and um, I, I, I valued my relationship with him. <coughs> now he's a neighbor, he lives a couple uh, blocks away from me. So thank you for doing this. I'm also familiar with uh, Chloe Pearson, serve on uh, the TRF uh, with her, and uh, I'm just impressed with her and her involvement in the community, just kind of jumping in pretty quickly, relatively soon after she moved here. And, uh, although she's been in, uh, has roots here. Uh, so I, I, one of the things that I, I think is important is that hey, we have a different perspective. We're kind of homogenous here in that we're all similar in age. We don't have children. We don't, uh, so for me, it's partly getting, um, we have children, but we don't have children in the schools or in the community. It's what I meant. 
uh, and uh, so getting a different perspective. Uh, and uh, for that purpose, I would I would recommend that we bring Clue Pearson on because she provides a little different background. She certainly showed the most interest in and provided uh, the most um, research and, and outreach uh, when she uh, sought this position. So uh, that would be my recommendation. Thank you for that. Um, anyone like to go next? Sure, I'll go. <laughs> Sure. You've been quiet, so it's about time. I'm always quiet. Thank you for, uh, we're all a similar of age. I like that. I don't know what's similar. <laughs> Within 20 years, I guess. <laughs> um, anyway, I uh, thank you guys for, for showing up and stepping forward. Um, like I said, I'm glad you all didn't do that one. So we would have had to run. But anyway. Um, Looking at the candidate, I think they're all very well qualified, and uh, I would like to see those that, that aren't uh, appointed uh, join into some of our other committees like we frequently discussed. Um, <clears throat> but I guess the one thing that, that impressed me most of all is uh, Kalud seemed to do most uh, outreach, uh, and she wanted to talk to all board members. She did. Uh, talk to all of us but me and we went back and forth but because I was out of town and in town and out of town we didn't get a chance to talk uh, but I think um, she impressed me for her willingness to do all of that so um, she would get my vote Jess Director Gardini um, again thank you everybody I I'm glad that we had so many people turn out to get into it and hear this from our community. Um, I would have to um, echo what um, the other director said. Um, all of you have given to the community, which is wonderful. And I hope you continue to do that because community needs everybody's help. And I think it makes a stronger community for doing that. Um, I would say that Kalud's outreach to us to talk to us uh, individually ahead of time to go in and talk to uh, our general manager um, showed me high interest in somebody who would, really wanted to know about the job, really knew what she was getting into. And um, the, I would have to agree with, um, I keep saying that for people who are younger, who have children in the school district and on the soccer teams and basketball teams, um, because you know my way of thinking is a, a little bit older than my than somebody who's got somebody in the school district, and so it would diversify us up here a little bit. Um, and although you're younger too, <laughs> Thank you. and so. Um, um, anyway, so on that, you're all more than qualified, and you're really all excellent candidates. So I'm back in two years because I'm not going to be rerunning. <laughs> and so we need people on the board. And um, so thank you for applying and showing up here. Um, I'll go ahead and go. <laughs> Um, I would just like to, again, thank you all for um, uh, putting forth your letter of interest and in serving on the uh, board. Uh, it's a tough decision, I think, that we're all facing. Um, and I just take exception with being classified with the rest of you old folks, you know? <laughs> did not say old folks, <laughs> but you have to. Oh, thank you. But I, I, um, I do have to agree that, you know, um, I do know Jerry um, personally, and um, uh, out of all of you, Jerry is the only person that I know. Um, and uh, Kalud, you did reach out, um, and we had an hour-long conversation, um, mainly me talking, um, but um, we did have, uh, you had some good questions um, that you asked, and I know you met with the general manager as well. Um, and William, you and I had met at, when I was um, uh, serving as a docent uh, last Friday at the Templeton Museum, you popped in. 
Um, so, uh, which I didn't know who you were at the time, <laughs> but, uh, but I soon learned, but, um, but Eric, we've not had a chance to meet, um, but I appreciate your interest. Um, but I think, I think, um, director English does raise a good point is that, um, this board, um, does need to cultivate more interest, um, in advance that we're in a situation like this. And I think by, um, hopefully coming back to this board with a recommendation of creating these seats on some of the committees where public can participate um, will help those of you who are not selected this evening um, to kind of get better engaged because there is a learning curve uh, in serving on this board. Um, but I think it might help you uh, in two years time when there will be three seats open. Um, some of us may not run, some of us will, but nonetheless, I think it's important that we have an election. Um, so um, I think that that needs to be encouraged. Um, but at this point, um, I also tend to think that um, diversity on this board is a good thing. Um, and we all are a group that have very different viewpoints. Um, we're all very opinionated, um, but it's a good thing. Um, and it helps us kind of flesh out um, issues better um, because we all look at things a little differently. Um, and I know, Kalud, you are already involved in the community. Um, and so, Jerry, I don't take offense, but I have to say, Kalud, I, I tend to lean towards you um, only because I think that you will add a little more diversity uh, in terms of age and having children and also being involved in the Templeton Rec Foundation already. I think it's a good kind of um, exposure to some of the park and rec issues um, that we face uh, here in the district. Um, so I think you've been somewhat exposed to that because um, that is between fire and park and rec. Those are the two departments in the district that are really revenue based by tax dollars, property tax dollars which is about six cents on the dollar. So um, it, it's tough. So that would be my vote for Kalut. Um, and Jerry, I hope you, Eric and William will throw your hat in the ring and remain engaged um, in some of the other committees and um, come back in two years and, and run for a seat on the board. Kalut would be my vote too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad to hear that you endorse that. So that's I'm good. I'm hoping that if you get this other thing involved, we'll be. I, I, I think I'd be very much interested in the fire department for the right. Yeah, I think I think that you raised a good point, uh, Director English, and I think that's going to be important because you know one of the things that this board has struggled with is how do we get more community engagement, and I think that is a very positive way in which we can do that, um, and I think it's important. So, um, Director. For Donish, you have any last votes? Yeah, I'll, I'll just, yeah, I'll just close this up then, I guess. But I mean, just looking at these letters makes me realize why I live in Templeton. I mean, this is you guys live being in Templeton, and this is just uh, it just tells me that the great community we are. I mean, yeah, being involved in the community, community services at my heart. I'm a lion, and I've been a lion for many years, so I really appreciate. You know, you guys being involved and serving the community, uh, Eric. I I would love to see you keep interested because you know you're a young guy, and I mean your IT expertise and you know being involved with the city. That's awesome. I wish we had like a planning commission or something. I get you onto that, but I hope you stay involved. Uh, really appreciate you coming, um, and uh, but um, uh, because uh, well. For my vote, uh, but, uh, I'm going with Kalud uh, uh, because you know she's already been involved with uh, TRF. Yeah, Parks and Rec is a big, big, huge thing in Templeton, and being involved in TRF, having kids there uh, in the Parks and Rec, uh, I think is uh, is very important. So I'm grateful that you applied and that you're interested, and I am looking forward to. Uh, hopefully work with you and, um, you know, get some more uh, ideas going. So again, thank you, you guys. I you know, appreciate it, but my work would be for uh, group. Okay, thank you. So I think we have a uh, unanimous uh, decision. Um, I, to I think you do it. Uh, unfortunately, I would like 
I would request that there would be a motion and a second and a vote to cast a, a because you're yeah. casting a, a specific formal recommendation. So I'll make order. the um, go ahead, director. I, I was going to move if you didn't go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion that the board accept um, Clude um, Pearson uh, or Pearson uh, as a uh, candidate um, for our nomination um, to serve on this board um, to put forth to the board of supervisors. Sir. Sure. Okay, so we have a motion made by Director Logan, uh, seconded by Director Peterson. Directors Logan? Aye. Peterson? Aye. English? Yes. Ardonish? Aye. And Jardini? Yes. Okay, so that motion passes five to zero. Again, thank you all. Um, and I just want to say how hard you made it for all of us <laughs> on the board. It, this was not easy. Um, so in reading all of your letters. So again, I, I can't emphasize enough. I hope you do run in two years time. Meanwhile, I think we'll be back in touch with you once we take a look at the bylaws and make any changes um, to hopefully have you um, give you at least some of the internal committees that the district has uh, and get you uh, participating in the, one of those committees. So, okay. Um, with that, we'll move to our general manager's report. Oh, her hand. Um, Nanette, did you have another question? Your hand is still up. Sorry, I couldn't unmute. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was still. How do I take it down? Um, I can do it. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sorry about that. No, I didn't have another question, although. Uh, since you've got me on the open mic at the moment, uh, congratulations uh, to Kalud uh, and to the board. I, I, I know this was a tough decision. Um, I hope that the other three candidates will stay involved. Um, I think that uh, the idea of getting them involved with committees is great, but I will tell you that in over 20 years of covering the district, that this isn't the first time this has come up. And I would remind you that the kind of people you want sitting on the board are the kind of people that take the initiative, not people who are, that you have to draw in, that you have to pull in. And so I'd like to see these people stand up and say, you know what, I wanna make sure that you send me the information on when these committees are meeting and I'm gonna pick one or two that I'm interested in following and staying engaged with. And I'm gonna show you that I'm somebody that wants to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Nanette. Okay, so let's move to the general manager's report. John. Uh, yes, thank you much. Just a couple of uh, items uh, that I want to call to your attention. Uh, one, we have completed a, a, a pilot study of a, of a filter technology at the wastewater treatment plant. That was something that was uh, planned for. We were able to arrange it finished today. Preliminary results were that the technology was effective, uh, but we're going to do <laughs> some, some, some follow-up and then incorporate um, that information with the the wastewater um, master plan in terms of where the where where when infiltration would be appropriate to add where it would go uh, where in the sequence of of capital improvements it belongs etc. But it was a successful uh, pilot study. Um, and then secondly, that the the living the dream fundraiser is <coughs> this Saturday night. It's a uh, First time we've held it since 2019 due to COVID. Uh, it's, it's a successful, uh, it has been in the past, a successful fundraiser for Templeton uh, Parks and Recreation. And uh, we hope that it will be uh, this year as well. It's also a, an opportunity to honor uh, some key volunteers uh, for Parks and Recreation. The, uh, the event is sold out, although there is a wait list in case we have any cancellations. So um, if you know anyone who's interested, you can get on the wait list. <coughs> Well, those are the only items that I, uh, I noted and called to your attention tonight. Any questions from members of the board? Okay, saying none. Uh, any questions from the public? Annette, do you have any questions of the general manager? Uh, no, thank you, but I am glad to see that this is moving forward. Okay. Um, well, I'm pleased to hear that the Living the Dreams has a wait list. I don't think that there's been a wait list before. Um, so, so that's very encouraging. It sells out. It's been sold, sold, it's sold out. out, but I don't know that there's been a wait list in the past. So that's that's encouraging. So that's great because that's a really tremendous fundraiser. Um, 
Okay, uh, committee reports. Um, there is an admin and finance committee report in the packet. Um, and I noticed that there is under strategic financial policies, there is um, uh, an item here that the committee is going to recommend come before a future uh, board meeting um, to change the vehicle um, uh, assigned to five to 10 year useful life um, to recommend that it be 10 to 15. So that's something that apparently that's going to be coming before. I just want to clarify that the, okay. the, the, the committee didn't, uh, the committee uh, recommended that that or asked that the item come before the board, but there was not a, a unanimous recommendation. For okay, the so that isn't, okay, so no so, no action has been taken then. No, we took an action, but it, the Wayne and I didn't agree on, uh, a, we didn't have a consensus between the two of us. So we said, bring it to the board and the board can decide. Yeah, we're looking okay. at some, but that item hasn't come before you yet because we're, 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 we're trying to see if we can find some, uh, standardized direction on this on, on this particular issue to, to complement the other information that, that the board would okay. consider. Okay, understood. So, um, and then I do have a comment on the Fire and Emergency Management Committee uh, minutes, if, if, yeah. if you're ready. Yes. So um, that item, when there was a Fire and Emergency Management Committee meeting also in, in mid-September, and the minutes are in, in your packet, but I, I wanted to point out that one of the items on that committee's agenda was uh, a review of an opportunity to buy a, a well-used uh, fire engine from Santa Barbara County. And the committee had recommended that the item move forward to the board and would have been on tonight's agenda. However, the engine that was uh, examined, inspected, I should say, for consideration was placed back into service by Santa Barbara County and it's been removed from the surplus opportunity. So that opportunity for that engine has gone. There are a couple of others that, uh, that are from the same vintage that might be available, but we didn't want to bring that item forward until our, our fire chief and, and some other folks have actually put their hands on it to, to, to see its condition and and um, uh, see if it really is equal to the one that was examined uh, here a month or so ago. So that that's why the, 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 okay. the action item hasn't come, come before you yet. Okay. And, and, and if, it, if it's not, if it's, if uh, you know, this was, if it's, uh, if, if these are well-worn, um, beyond serviceable life, then we wouldn't. So do you want also want to mention about the donation? Yeah, I was going to call that on, uh, uh, is that on the agenda? Or it's, well, it's under the Fire and Emergency Management Committee meetings. Yes, I, I, yes, I certainly can. Um, another item that the committee discussed <laughs> or was briefed on is that we had a local business uh, um, inquire with, with the fire department about items that, that are, that were in need and, and uh, suggest that they had a, they were prepared to make a sizable donation. And um, after some dialogue, they agreed to purchase on our behalf, a, a bottle uh, It's a compressor for filling air bottles or uh, SCBA bottles. It's, a, it's about a $50,000 piece of equipment. And that item, uh, rather than make the donation to TCSD, for us to purchase, they purchased it and are having it shipped here. It's not here yet, but it's expected in, the, in the, this month. So it's a pretty sizable uh, donation. Uh, that donor wishes to remain anonymous at this point, um, but it's important because you know we, we have been filling for, for years, the district's primary way of filling these uh, bottles. And they're, they're used, uh, these SCBAs are used anytime a firefighter has to go on oxygen, on air, when they enter a, a, a structure fire or a hazardous situation. Um, we've used our, our breathing support. It's a, it's a mobile generator, but uh, that we've had trouble with it. It hasn't been reliable. There's been some other problems. And so really for the past couple of years, largely we've been sending firefighters um, when these need to be filled, like to an adjoining uh, city, Paso Robles or Cascadero, and having them fill the bottles. Um, so it's a, it takes our people out of the district during that exercise. And, and the bottles, I know we don't have a lot of structure fires, but the bottles are used for training. And so the, 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 you know, it's, this is something that is routinely used. So it'll be valuable in that we're going to be able to fill it right here. Um, and uh, that'll keep folks in the community during those, uh, during those times. That's a very generous donation, um, $50,000. So um, yeah. Um, that was a uh, very nice surprise. So um, I just recognize them. I know they don't want to. Do yeah. Um, so so we, we're working on a, a way to do so. Um, so, yeah. 
Um, and then the out of county assignment, um, I think it's worth um, noting the revenue that um, was anticipated from. Um, yeah, we haven't month. we haven't reconciled that yet. Um, our revenue versus expenses, you know, uh, but we do have a, a crew of, of four out on a fourteen day assignment. Uh, three different buyers, fourteen days in the late August, early September. Any questions on the committee reports? I have, uh, a, well, sure. I have a comment or question. Um, I wanted to make a couple of comments from our yesterday's meeting. So would you, uh, that we had, uh, sure. that said, yeah. would you like me to do that here or wait till the- No, uh, go ahead uh, and do it now uh, because we're under committee reports. So yeah. So um, thank you. So I just want to make a couple of uh, comments. Yesterday, uh, uh, President Logan and I, we had a facility uh, meeting at the wastewater and um, uh, treatment center. And I, you know, there, it was very interesting. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, I was just thinking about comparing it to six years ago when we I first started going there to now. It's just incredible to just uh, right from the beginning, you know, the process has become automatic. There's no manual cleanup and things like that. And then as you go and look at the ponds, all the ponds are working and they're working way, uh, well. All the aerators are working. I mean, it looks very, you know, it looks really nice. And um, I just, uh, and then also we, we saw the filter system in action. Uh, it was, saw it in action. <laughs> I went to climb the ladder. <laughs> yes, I had to climb way up there, but it was amazing what it could do. I mean, if the water that came out, it was practically clear. And uh, it was uh, it was uh, incredible. But I just want to also give a shout out to our utility manager, uh, uh, Justin, uh, and he's just so passionate. He's just so passionate about this. He has ideas. He he just wants to collect data and figure out what to do. And even though this filtration system does the job, but he's thinking how he's going to be able to possibly come up with other ideas that he we may not even need it. And uh, and then another thing that's you know was surprising and it was great was um, you know when they came here uh, you know we were expecting to have all these allergies and all these problems you know they were ex expecting what is like you know to be at eighty uh, parts per million but I mean everything is going so well it actually ended up things being really clean already it's like we were down to fifteen but I think he had they just tested yesterday and. The last pond, the, uh, the uh, particle the per, uh, per a million was like three. I mean, we were doing it without any filter system. So, I mean, he's, you know, I mean, the, and he's also put in some couple of, uh, oh, a testing center. Testing center, that's that good. He's getting his re results within a couple of hours rather than waiting a month. So it's become almost instantaneous. So he knows that you know, if there's any adjustments made, he, he knows exactly what's going on. So, I mean, for me, it was very exciting to see that he's passionate. He really, uh, I'm sure it makes <laughs> Jeff's job easier too. Uh, but, uh, he, you know, things are going really well. And this filter system is nice, but we'll see even if it's needed. But uh, we will, you know, we'll just have to continue to test and see how things go. I have to agree. I think Justin Black is a very good hire um, as utility manager. Um, yeah, I mean, he he showed us around the facility and it's amazing to see, um, but the testing was the big thing for me because um, he was saying how they would send off the uh, samples and not get the test results back for a month. Yeah. Now it's within a couple of hours because they're running the tests right there on site, which is really a huge accomplishment. Um, so um, yeah, I think he, and he's got the enthusiasm and he's got a plan for really how to kind of lay out what needs to occur there. So that's good. Um, you had a question or a comment, uh, Director English? Just a question for the general manager, and this is on the agenda, but are we percolating everything that, uh, now at Selby? Yes, for more than two years, we haven't had a drop, not just the phone. Are you been percolating? Uh, not yeah, not in a while. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it'll be interesting when we in February look at the um, um, the um, water water uh, model um, to see whether or not we can release even more water units. Um, so we've gone from 25 to 36, we'll see what we can do. Um, but I think we're headed in the right direction. So any other comments uh, from the board on the committee reports? 
Any comments or questions from members of the public on the committee reports? Okay. All right, hearing and seeing none, we'll move to um, activity updates from uh, staff. Um, we have the engineering report, um, the finance report, fire and emergency services, park and recreation and solid waste. Um, any comments on uh, any of these um, three or four items? From anyone? Okay. Any members of the public? Okay. Um, then let's move on to um, director's reports and or comments. Uh, any directors uh, participate in any meetings on behalf of the district um, that you would like to comment on? I can say I did participate in the chambers um, uh, meeting that they had uh, where it was really somebody from Cal Poly, um, one of their um, water management individuals. Um, and it was really more looking at the drought and the impact and how to better manage water um, within the, uh, the state. Uh, really, it wasn't specific to the county, which was quite interesting. Um, and I believe you forwarded the link to uh, the other board members um, via email. So um, public comments, uh, we have a closed session, so we won't have any public comments until our next meeting um, in two weeks. Um, so um, the board will adjourn to closed session. Um, again, thank you all of you for uh, attending tonight's meeting. and. Um, I think we'll be in touch and hopefully keep you all engaged because um, I think you all will add value and uh, can contribute to the district. So thank you again for your interest and I hope you all have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we have a I forgot to announce 10 full time community cleanup day. Cleanup day next Saturday. This Saturday. Next Saturday. Next Saturday. It's the October 15th from 9 a.m. to noon. Right.